All right, I'm on page 199 now. Um, this is a preview of what you're going to get in the start ministering portion of the book. Uh, you'll notice what's missing. What is it that these gunslingers can't provide? And why is it such a travesty? You know? Hmm. Uh, there's no ministry beyond the 50 minute hour. No 24-7 availability. No availability of the unusual services a church can provide. And no possibility to involve others as in a church fellowship. Look at all the things it cannot do, what it does not do. Um, being available 24-7. That was possible because the ministry was shared rather than one person having a caseload. Different aspects on that. Visiting a person at home. <laughs> yeah, do they do house calls? Um, in the hospital. Or in the workplace. Um, different aspects there. Shared meals. Shared meals. Coffee, tea, refreshment time. I do this quite a bit. I call people up. I meet them for lunch. Do all kinds of things. Providing food, money, and such practical assistance as child or elder care. Help with household chores. Recognizing, man, you know, you got a lot going on at the moment. Can we, can we help? Can we, can we bring some meals by? Can we uh, clean your house? Other things. We had a fellowship committee, a koinonia committee that does all kinds of things. Daily prayer for one another, either in person or on the phone. The prayer meetings that we have here on Sunday mornings, Wednesday nights. The ladies have an extra prayer meeting on Wednesday mornings. These are uh, amazing. And anyone's invited to come at any, at any of these prayer times. And we will pray with you in addition to praying for you when the notice goes out over the email. Expressions of love and care in the local fellowship, including hospitality, ongoing encouragement, sending cards, Relationships that continue on and develop. Relationships that turn around. The shoe does get on the other foot on occasion. Of course, that never happens in the professional paid-for-services routine. All right, There's never a time when, uh, you know, you tell your counselor, boy, you've been helping me out all these weeks. Uh, how can I help you today? <laughs> when would that happen? All right. The local church is the place for pastoral care and the mutual edification of all believers under the authority of the foundation laid by Scripture and is given by Jesus Christ within the mutual ministry of the saints, one to another, for the building up of the body of Christ. And again, I would stress to you, not only is that the design, uh, but that is the mandated design through Scripture where violating that is actually banned such as um, 1 Corinthians 6, going outside the local church and taking a brother to court, going to a secular judge who has no standing in the church. That is absolutely banned in Scripture. Is there not a wise man among yourselves who will be able to decide between his brothers? We ought to be able to handle our own issues. In fact, we're commanded to handle our own issues. Going outside the flock. And, and here's, here's even more sad is even within the body of Christ, the church universal, the scriptures actually describe the, the, uh, the, the one another context, every one another context I have looked at, and I've not asked a challenge, I said, show me one that disproves this. Every one another context I'm looking at is within the, within the context of local. Local church. Okay? So... Pastor Cliff Beveridge in, in Lost Pines Bible Church, I love them in the Lord. I will always love them in the Lord. But they are not a part of the one another that is Austin Bible Church. Understand that? All right. And so I can still fellowship with them. Um, I can still cooperate with them. We can join together in, in missionary endeavors. I think we're, we're learning in our Corinthian series about how local churches cooperate together. But when it actually comes time to sit down and to minister, you are the sheep allotted to my charge, and those are the sheep allotted to his charge, and every lampstand are the sheep allotted to that man's charge, and the locality of the local church, that particular flock, that particular uh, aspect, manifestation of the body of Christ, that is the scope in which these things are to be dealt with. 
that these, uh, these items are to be prayed over, wrestled over, loved over, and, and, and everything else. Any questions on that? All right. It doesn't mean that they're not part of the body of Christ. It doesn't mean that we don't love them. And clearly, the ones that are closest to us in like-mindedness, you know, I'm going to have a lot more fellowship with Lost Pines. I'm going to have a lot more fellowship with Gulf Coast. I'm going to have a lot more fellowship with Country. I'm going to have a lot more fellowship with West Houston Bible Church. Um, uh, with these churches that are similar in our, uh, in our uh, structure and philosophy and ministry and doctrine and, and so forth. Uh, certainly a lot more than I'm going to have with, you know, the Lutheran church up the street or the Methodist church over here or things of that nature. Only because there's less harmony, less fellowship, less like-mindedness related to uh, how we approach the scriptures. So, in any event. Cahoots means partnership in league. And when you are named with them and they are the objects of God's wrath, um, <laughs> what are you setting yourself up for? What are you setting yourself up for? Okay, 10 minutes remaining. What are your questions, thoughts, concerns? Luke. Just a, a few observations. Mm -hmm. uh, just to really jump out at me after going through the early chapters of our text and how it's uh, in great detail just to uh, list the number of violations of the scripture mm -hmm. and the sinful speaking inside the session gossip and, and slander and, mm -hmm. the, uh, what fellowship does light have with darkness uh, denying 2 Peter 1 the sufficiency of scripture and the result of that is the Revelation 22 you're adding to the word of God right and then uh, Adding the Word of God with the world's wisdom, with the secular insights. Yeah. And, uh, and the, the peddling the Word of God and the using the Bible for a sordid gain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then in the, page 183, the, the author used the, the adjective uh, parasitical justification mm. of their industry. On page 183? These biblical counselors. Right. And it, that really jumped out at me as far as the, what did... Uh, what did our Lord, how did he respond righteously with indignation to <laughs> the peddling of the house of God? Yeah, the money changers in the temple. and uh, That's right. What kind of judgment should these people expect? Oh, I agree. Absolutely. What sort of judgment should these people expect? I think a severe judgment. An absolute severe judgment. And this, is this not Laodicea in so many ways that you say you are rich? Uh, and don't realize that you're wretched, miserable, poor, not blind, and naked. Um, and uh, it is interesting. Yeah, the, the money involved, I didn't talk about that, but as you look through this, it's unbelievable. And, the, and, and what feeds it to the schools, um, they got a vested interest in keeping these programs alive because that's a significant number of their student body, right? And if they did away with the whole counseling department, then that's going to send all those students to other schools who have counseling departments. And, uh, oh, that means we lose the revenue of those students and their tuition and fees and all the other things. So, um, yeah, it just breaks the heart that, you know, good men are... And, and yeah, they've been in the same verses we know. They, why, why is it that they tell themselves that it's not gossip? Why is it they convince themselves that it's not filthy lucre? They convince themselves that God's blessing it. You know, and to me, that's, that's the greatest evil because that's calling good evil and evil good. And, and uh, um, I think it's the philosophy of this age. I think that it's the seduction of, and let's be honest, most seminaries have gotten this route. Um, why did Dallas Seminary crave accreditation? Why does Schaefer Seminary today? And, and Robbie Dean's my, I love him. I love George Meister. I love these men. Uh, but why are they so craving accreditation? You know, this, this, this whole thing that, well, we want our degrees to be accepted. We want to, to be on par with, well, wait a minute. With what? With uh, Berkeley and their philosophy PhDs? You want to have, the, you want to have your THM uh, accredited by the same agency that accredits, uh, you know, these insane studies. Let's examine the sex life of a womp rat. Or, you know, I mean, they got this dumb stuff. And they're getting federal funds and all this 
psychology studies and what, everything else. So anyway, no, I agree with that. Other questions, thoughts, comments? They convince themselves that it's acceptable. They convince themselves that it's, that it's appropriate. That it's not gossip when it's in the counseling. If, if you tell the pastor, it's not gossip. Well, who says so? Right? Is too. <laughs> you know? Are we, we're like kids on the playground. Is not. Is too. Well, let's go to the scripture. And in the passages that, that forbid us in gossip and slander and all these things, is there anything in there that says that, uh, you know, it's not gossip if you tell the pastor? Thou shalt not gossip? Unless, of course, it's your pastor here. No. Gossip is gossip. You can't sanctify it by having an approved uh, session in, uh, in a sanctified setting like counseling. Okay. It's amazing. And they create this whole, ooh, this um, client counsel, counselor-client privilege. Right, whereby uh, it's, uh, it's like attorney-client privilege. It's just as enshrined in, in Western traditions, the uh, attorney-client privilege. And, uh, no, it's not. You made it up to try to give some equivalency to the, to the counselor who has a, you know, a sociology degree from the community college. Um, that somehow it's... Actually, they've actually had some legal cases against it. Lawyers are fighting back. Uh, they want to maintain the sanctity of their privilege while they... Realize this other thing is kind of funny. Um, anyway, that's, a, that's another topic. I'm getting off on rabbit trails tonight. Other questions, thoughts, concerns? You have two weeks now to read chapter 8. And um, the, uh, this is where we start to turn it into very positive, uh, constructive, I think practical things. How do I, how do I stop from being problem-centered? How do I stop from discussing things? Say, so we have to. How can he help me if I don't explain to him uh, a, B, C, D, and E. Okay? You don't need to know A, B, C, D, and E. And, and all that detail is just going to poison his mind. He doesn't need to hear any of that. He can teach the truth and you can grow in grace and knowledge without knowing all that. So, and it's better that he doesn't hear it, actually. We'll talk about that as well. Alright. Thank you, Father, for your truth. Thy word is truth. Father, continue to bless us as we read, as we consider, as we evaluate, and uh, come to the convictions. I thank you for the Scriptures that Luke offered up here tonight and the, and the recognition that yes, I think any believer that, that fairly uh, goes through all of these principles and all these scriptures and the whole concept, I don't know that any brother or sister in Christ with, with this um, searching of the scriptures can have a conscience that, that, that is, that is uh, acceptable for this activity. Father, my conscience can't even begin to even think of this activity as being acceptable. So, Father, uh, the conviction that you have, I have before the Lord, happy as he does not condemn himself and that which he approves, I pray that every believer that examines this matter would do so in the humility of searching the scriptures to see if these things are so and come to the faith conviction that Jesus Christ would have them come to. And I thank you, Father, in Jesus Christ's most precious and holy name. Thank you for coming tonight. Keep your armor on. Walk in the light as he is in the light. We will see you again, either here, there, or in the air.